All right, gang, first up for feeding is my squad of four Indian pea puffers, the smallest species of puffer fish on the planet, also a completely freshwater species. What I like about these guys is they are super active. They are the type of fish that vibrates its fins so that it can swim omnidirectional, omnidirectionally not on like a helicopter. You might call them the hummingbirds of the home aquarium. They're extremely cool, extremely curious, and they cohab together. They even cohab with other fish. I wanted this to be essentially a species only tank, but I did put about six coolie loaches in as a, kind of a cleanup crew on the bottom. Coolie loaches are my other favorite fish. I don't know if we'll get to see any here because they're nocturnal, but they're long eel-like fish with kind of an orange and brown or purpley brown giraffe-like pattern. Really cool fish. Uh, second only maybe to these guys. I don't know. I can't decide. I think coolies are still my all-time favorite. Anyway, these guys eat a carnivorous diet. A lot of puffer fish have a beak that they use to crush things like carapaces and shells and exoskeletons, and you need to be constantly feeding them shelled creatures like clams and stuff to wear down that beak or it gets too big and gets in the way of them having a good life. Uh, for these guys, however, that's not the case. So they eat uh, frozen and then thawed bloodworms, which is a pretty common high protein diet for a lot of freshwater and I guess saltwater aquarium fishes. Oh yeah, last thing I wanna say is look at this tank. This is almost all live plants. I have a few plastic ones in here just for filler while the real plants grow out. Of course, this is a very low lighting, pretty minimal light source, so growth is slow. You can see how this hygrophilia has shot right up to the top, and only once it reached the top did it really start to take off. Uh, that's to be expected, and it creates a look that I think is interesting and cool. The water is brown because... You know what? There you go. There's a rare glimpse of a coolie loach in the daytime. Hey, buddy. So they got little puppy dog faces and eel-like bodies, and they're just the coolest. And they apparently pair very well with these pea puffers. Uh, both a super cheap fish I would recommend to anybody, even little kids. Uh, the pea puffers were $5 Canadian each, and the coolie loaches were on sale for $0.99 cents each. So not a big investment here. The water is brown because of all the driftwood that I have in there, and also I've put leaf litter in there. I have uh, sterilized oak leaves that I collected myself and boiled to make sure they didn't have anything funky on them. Just for a little perspective, I'm going to take you from this tank to my main community tank, and you can see the difference not only in lighting, but clarity of water. Pretty wild stuff, if you ask me. Big difference, and this isn't my go-to aesthetically, but these fish love it. This is more similar to the river water in India that they would be in in the wild. And truth be told, a lot of my fish in that other tank would prefer this kind of uh, water as well. But, uh, you know, aesthetics are a thing and they're doing fine where they are. And I like uh, clearer water with higher lighting makes the greens of the plants pop. And that's what I'm really in it for considering the desolate Canadian winter outside my windows. So without further ado, Let's drop these bad boys in here and watch the feeding frenzy commence. And immediately they're after it. All right, it is no small task to be focusing on these guys, but I think I'm doing okay. Got this guy over here chowing down. And you can see one in the background taking them off the floor. So that's a hot tip. They do take it off the ground once it lands. There are plenty of fish that are top feeders or mid water feeders that completely ignore food once it hits the ground. But these guys are smarter than that. They're more opportunistic than that. So it's cool. But uh, how it's supposed to work is once it hits the ground, it becomes fair game for our cleanup crew, the coolie loaches, who are in the back there getting some scraps, which is, that's just their position in life, you know? We can't all be chads. All right, I got a little more here. We'll dump the rest and we'll watch them work. 
Go boys. I say boys, but I specifically requested uh, three females and a male to prevent fighting and also for the potential of breeding one day because these guys can be bred by the amateur aquarist. Here we go, they're all going crazy here. Yeah, and I can also tell males from females. Maybe I'll get into that in another video if people are interested. Oh, do you see that? That was a little Lady in the Tramp action. So yeah, uh, the blood worms come in kind of a blister pack and you pop out a cube and thaw it, but that is way too much for what I have here. So I cut those cubes into four and I give them a quarter cube and that's enough to feed all four puffers and all six coolies apparently because people are thriving. I can see the coolies gaining weight since I moved them over from the other community tank where they weren't exactly getting enough food. Everybody's really thriving in here. And it also has an interesting and unique uh, look that I think is reminiscent of what you see when you actually go free diving in freshwater environments. You don't always have the same visibility of a clear water lake or the ocean, but it's still dope. Check these guys out. You can see them sifting through the sand and blowing it out as gills there. Anyway, these guys are thriving, living their best life, uh, cohabbing with these peepees, as my girlfriend calls them. But yeah, the peepees are thriving, the coolies are keeping it cool. If I was to say anything else about this tank, it is that it is very close to the floor on the bottom shelf of a rack that contains various uh, spiders, scorpions, and other invertebrates. But it is the jewel in that it's lit up all day and it looks quite different. It also doesn't draw the eye as much as a fluorescent tank would, so it really works well down low. You know, this is the star, and you get this little brown nugget for dessert. If I wanted to slot anything else into this video, it is that whenever I find a glass vase of any kind of substantial volume on the side of the road or even at Value Village once in a while, if the price is right, I always take it home, put about an inch of dirt in it and about a half inch of sand on top, and I start taking plants from my aquarium that I trim and sticking them in the sand, and next thing you know, you've got something like this. And these are very popular with, I hate to say it, but white girls. Okay gang, so now that we've talked about my little tiny pea puffers, we are going to be feeding my largest pet, which is of course a almost nine foot adult female Taiwanese beauty rat snake. For all of you fish people who click through because of the thumbnail or the algorithm in whatever way, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoy the pea puffer stuff, and I also hope you'll enjoy this. I'm about to be feeding a rat that was humanely killed and sold to me by a pet store that I have thawed out in warm water and will be feeding to my snake. Some people think it's insanely gross. I certainly did for many years. I still do. Uh, I really wish that snakes ate, you know, Brussels sprouts or something. They don't. It is what it is, however. This animal is, as the name implies, a rat snake. This is really all that they eat, or certainly all that they need to eat. Uh, so it's a necessity of keeping this animal. Again, the animal is pre-killed humanely, and all I did was thaw it out, and we're going to watch the animal take it and then swallow it. If that's something you can't handle, you don't have to watch. But why not push yourself just a little bit and check out this awesome creature that everyone should know about and care about so that it can be protected and respected. Let's get into it. All right, let's see how this goes. Usually she's a fantastic eater. I anticipate she will be this evening as well. Let's find out. I've got a super jumbo rat here for her, which is on the bigger end of what she should eat. You want that? You're the queen. But, ooh. A little exercise here. Give me a little enrichment here, girl. Make it interesting for both of us. Yeah, okay. All right, you got it. You killed it. 
Okay, so. All right, well that went pretty smoothly. Let's move to time-lapse. You can watch her take this thing down. I gotta go wash my hands. have it guys that snake won't need to eat for about another month a pretty low maintenance animal in terms of feeding the pea puffers however need to be fed that high protein diet daily but i don't mind at all because they're so dang adorable anyway that's it for this episode of hoinoi tv if you had fun please let me know in a comment throw me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel whether you're into fish and aquaria or reptiles and rutabaga just get in here we're having a lot of fun I'm stuck in my apartment right now for the most part, but I do plan to do kind of an MTV crib style thing where I go to various reptile breeding facilities, large private collections, people that have entire reptile rooms or entire reptile apartments, which is obviously the case in my situation. And I'll be doing wicked ass video tours of those places. It's gonna be a lot of fun, big things coming on the channel. Of course, lots of underwater footage of me free diving with the GoPro, maybe even spearfishing this summer, depending on my ability to travel within Canada or internationally. If you wanna support this channel, the biggest thing you can do is like, comment, and subscribe. But if you wanna take it a step further, I do have a Patreon page set up, for which there is a link in the description. Shout out to my current patrons, Clayton from Calgary. Big up to the squad. Shout out to MEG, mega excellent gentleman. Keeping it on lock, we ain't never gonna fall off. That's what I wanna to say to Clayton. And my other patron, the homie, Big Nasty J out of Vancouver, patron saint of patrons of the arts. What up to your mother? No insinuation implied. Literally say hi to your mom for me. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Hornor TV will return next week with even more spicy content for your dehydrated little eyeballs. You're gonna love it. Hang on tight. How many other YouTubers are you watching that record their videos by candlelight? Not too many, I bet. That's right, I do things a little different. Be sure to, oh, be sure to subscribe. It's gonna be